AMD shows off their roadmaps and we got some X3D chips coming. Tesla shows off their robot that can walk a little bit and Intel shows off the benchmarks for their GPUs. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is about something I know everybody's very excited for, and that is the X3D version of Ryzen 7000. And now there is new public roadmap out there, except for it was privately shared with people who weren't the press, and now it's being made public because people got pictures of it. And now we kind of have a better indication of when AMD is planning on rolling out what people want in the gaming chips of the X3D varieties. However, do need to talk about it for a second because there's a few things about it that uh, I, I, I've been hearing weird conversations about. Anyways, in case you're not up to speed, the X3D versions of AMD CPUs bring about 15 to 20 percent better gaming performance thanks to adding more level three cache. And so they're just really good at gaming. Take everything AMD just launched with the Ryzen 7000 and scale it up just a little bit. And that is exactly what's coming out of this roadmap is that AMD is planning to launch these TBA, but they're part of the roadmap. However, we have more details on that, but I want to I want to take a moment to look at this roadmap and be a little mad. OK, I'm going to be a little salty, a little angry at AMD here because one of my favorite things that AMD releases is their APUs. Love the 5600G, love the 4750G, the 3400G. It's been great. And so I desperately really would like an RDNA 2 version of an APU. That would be phenomenal because the 56 and 5700G are still on Vega graphics. Kind of a bummer. But if we look here at their roadmap, this dividing line is the end of this year. They are planning on keeping their 5000G processors potentially until the end of the year. And in TBA, maybe we won't even get them until 2024, which is just... I know technically every Ryzen 7000 chip is an APU because it has integrated graphics, but they're not enough to play video games on. And this is just, this is just so frustrating that the APUs are not on their like actual roadmap for 2023, but X3D kind of is, but they're also indicating that they're going to continue their 5000 X3D variants through the end of 2023 as well, potentially even launching some lower end stuff like the Ryzen 5 3600 AF maybe that we talked about in an episode of a hot news last week that you can check out right there. That'd be exciting. But the well-known leaker Greymon coming out with his anticipated details around X3D. So the guess on price for that is the 7800X3D will be about $500. The 7900X3D will be $650 and the 7950X3D will be $800. But this gives us a good indication kind of on top of what AMD has already said that they're preparing multiple product iterations of the X3D and we're not just going to get a 5800X3D, which I brought up as a conspiracy theory in last week's hot news that AMD might have sandbagged their X3D chips because they didn't want them to outshine the Ryzen 7000 series. And this way with the Ryzen and 7000 X3D chips, if they're priced that high, well then it's it doesn't sandbag them. It's just like if you don't need the extra gaming performance, you need the better multi-core, multi-clock and stuff, then you could just get the regular one and save some bucks. But also, according to Greymon, that they should be coming out sometime in February or March of 2023, which lines up with previous rumors that we're going to be getting them announced at CES in January of 2023, and that in the third week of October, it will go from small volume production to high volume production, which is quicker than it was with the 5800X3D. So big news around that. AMD continuing to clock on forward with major enhancements in their CPU department. Are you waiting for the X3D upgrades before you switch over to the brand new platform? Let me know down below in those comments. And one of the reasons people are waiting to switch is that it's just such an expensive cost to upgrade. And now we are getting our first look at B650 pricing out in the open market. And it's it's not great. So the first B650 motherboards are being listed at B&H Photo. We're expecting AMD to actually give us a full announcement of this. I believe it's on Wednesday, but they're starting at 200 bucks. Obviously, this is only MSI motherboards, but they range from 200 to 330 dollars. And considering the cheapest otherwise motherboard that's out there right now is roughly 245 dollars, it's actually not that much cheaper than what's currently out there. And we'll have a video coming out soon on the cheapest Ryzen 7000 PC that you can build right now. And it's it's a 650 dollar upgrade if you're coming from anything besides Alder Lake, where you already have DDR5. Anyways, this kind of is not exactly the starting price that AMD 
community indicated they said that B650 should start at $125. We still have to wait to see if that's actually gonna be true. We're waiting on the full announcement to see the full pricing on all of that. I would like to know more, but right now, $200 minimum from MSI, not boding well for that $125 price point. But in case you are looking to upgrade to Ryzen 7000, Micro Center has this great deal. They're not sponsoring this, just an announcement for anybody who happens to live near one. I don't, gonna cry. Anyways, get free 32 gigs of RAM if you purchase a Ryzen 7000, Ryzen 7, or Ryzen 9 CPU. So not the Ryzen 5 7600X, but anything else or higher, you get a free 32 gigabyte G-Skill Flare X5 DDR5 5600 CL16 kit for free, which is valued at $190. Which, in case you live close to a micro center or it's within a decent drive, that might actually be worth it for you in case you were considering upgrading anyways. However, some people upgrading with ASRock motherboards getting really frustrated. We talked about this in an episode of Hot News last week. Actually, did we? I can't remember. But they're putting a sticker on the RAM slot that when you peel it off, leaves residue. We actually encountered this when we built our cheapest Ryzen 7000 PC over on Twitch, and it did leave the residue. It really wasn't hard to get off. I had to use some tweezers to actually like properly peel it off. But you can see, especially for a first time PC builder, if they're not careful, you could end up getting that into the RAM pins and it would it would be a big, big issue. Anyways, ASRock coming out with an official statement saying that uh, you can return it for a newer version if necessary that they're trying to fix it but they are accepting at least some type of like rma for this you can contact your local retailer for the exchange service on this because it can present an issue in some cases for people who actually aren't understanding it i do get why asrock was putting this on there because it was showing that the first boot on these ryzen 7000 chips is going to take a while in fact it did when we built our pc but it's no excuse for using such a garbage adhesive that just they didn't test if it peels up properly or they were just like ah it doesn't matter i don't know but you know what doesn't matter as well crypto stars let's talk about it bitcoin down a little bit 19207 ethereum down a little bit 1298 and dogecoin down a little bit down to 5.9 cents and reese is down a little bit south because he's in south africa giving us the hottest tech deals on the internet isn't that right buddy no Thank you so much, Reese. Great appreciation. But I'm going to replace you with a Tesla bot. At least that's what Tesla wants me to think because they showed off their Optimus bot at their AI day just on Friday, showing off what they've been working on over the last year and uh, kind of what they previewed. And they're, they're still working on it. This is a beta robot, but it can walk up to five miles an hour, carry 45 pounds. They're allegedly saying that it can do essentially whatever a human can do eventually. And this was the first time that they actually let it walk unassisted. So not exactly inspiring, especially when you compare it to something like the Boston Dynamics Atlas robot that can actually do parkour, but Tesla announcing that they are training it in the metaverse so that they actually get the neural nets and the programming done while they're also building out the physical hardware. And so I just want to have a quick conversation around this because it does look rather uninspiring when you watch them present this robot. It actually looks terrible compared to what's already out there from a company like Boston Dynamics. But one of the key conversations that that I've heard is that while Boston Dynamics, yes, is building out that technology, one of the things they lack is the ability to bring things to scale like Tesla already has. And that's kind of the plan that they're going with with this Optimus bot that it should be available for $20,000 or less at retail. However, taking Tesla as Tesla, that is absolutely a meaningless statement because the Cybertruck is not going to launch at $40,000 like it was supposed to. It's already delayed two whole years and is not going to come out at the price point that you're expecting it to be. And so expecting the Optimus bot to do that, there's a lot of high uh, highfalutin projections from Elon Musk on what this can do. Obviously, we have to wait and see. Is this going to develop into something that actually matters? Why, why do you need robots? Why do you need robots? Let me know down below in the comments. And NASA probably wants a robot that could fly to the moon by itself, but right now they have to use rockets and the Artemis 1 rocket ain't taken off in October. The window for it to close to actually get to the moon, I believe was closing on October 4th. And so because of Hurricane Ian and everything going on in Florida, they've actually had to delay it and they're gonna miss this launch window and they're pushing it to November and that's gonna be between November 12th and November 27th. Hopefully there's no leakage when that actually happens and USB is leaking 
all of the things. They're just leaking at the seams with different names and concepts for how they can be called the most confusing thing ever. And we've talked about how USB version two of USB four was coming out, but they're changing all of that and they're changing the names again and they're dropping super speed, which was apparently an official designation of USB. And now it's not gonna be called that at all. Instead, you're gonna have USB 40 gig, USB 40 gig and power. And it's gonna, you have to look, if it has a battery, that means it's a power cable. But if it just has the gigabits, that means it's just a data cable. And so they're just gonna call it based on the speed. And then in case you wanna know if it has power, you gotta look for the Duracell bunny. I don't know, like are our companies actually gonna stick to this? Are we actually gonna go with the ability to recognize USB data cables on the cables? Cause that would be great. I would like to know on the cable, but usually it's just on the packaging, which makes me sad. I wanna see more of actually knowing what a cable is when I look at the cable. And I'm sure Stadia devs probably wanted to know more about the company shutting down Stadia because they did not know. And that's actually coming out as the fallout. We talked last week about how Google announced they're shutting down their cloud gaming service of Stadia. And now it's being found out that Stadia gave no heads up to the companies that they were partnering with to bring games to the platform with several developers saying that they just launched on Stadia or they were planning on launching on Stadia or they signed weeks of paperwork and they did all of the onboarding process and now they just don't know if they're even going to get paid by Google which is just absolutely horrible and a bunch of developers saying that they were expecting revenue from this even moments after they announced that they were shutting down they posted in their discord that they were launching a new game which is like the most disjointed conversation between the company that I've seen in quite some time. It's pretty gosh dang bad. However, I like, I, this isn't gonna be I, and I told you so, but just kind of a retrospective looking at how Stadia was handled. It was very clear from the very beginning that they were not communicating very well, just interdepartmentally or even across Google. Like nobody had any idea what was going on. Again, I just constantly bring up, they didn't have a search function until 12 months after launch. A Google product couldn't use search. It's just, if that isn't the most blatant example of the company not believing in their own product, I don't know what is. I feel really bad for the devs. Google mishandling this at nearly every opportunity. The only positive that I've seen is that they're gonna give refunds to everybody who bought a game or bought the hardware. You just don't get repaid for your subscription. However, there's some people like this one guy who played 6,000 hours of Red Dead Online only on Stadia. And because Rockstar doesn't have the ability for you to transfer your online account from one platform to another, He's just screwed. And so there's a community engagement. There's a lot of fan uproar to try to get Rockstar to allow him to transfer his character off of the Stadia platform because it's dying. But this is just, this sucks in all contexts. I'm not surprised, I'm just disappointed. And that's gonna be the rallying cry against Intel's GPUs because they're being very forthright on the benchmarks and everything that's coming out and us getting official announcements of the ARC A750's price point and release date, which is gonna be the same as the A770, and it's gonna cost $50 less at $289. Excuse me, that is... $40 less. So Intel publishing that figure, also publishing some benchmarks with this in a bunch of different games, uh, comparing the A750 to the RTX 3060, as well as the A770 to the RTX 3060, showing the performance per dollar, as well as the performance and average FPS of these cards across it. And one of the things that Intel wanted us to know is that picking up an A750 will get you 53% more performance per dollar, or the A770 will get you 42% more performance per dollar. However, just like it, you expect with kind of Intel's marketing stuff, there's a catch in there somewhere and there absolutely is. They based the price of the 3060 on an average selling price of $418 over on Newegg, but they based their own pricing on the lowest MSRP that they would actually sell for. And they also made it so that this number is already out of date. Cause if you just go over to Newegg, you can kind of see that most of the cards are still, they're actually below $400. So I guess you can maybe average up, especially if you're taking into consideration something like a 530 but it's 100% unfair that they would do that and not compare it at least. Like I get that they wouldn't do it at MSRP because Nvidia cards are not selling that low brand new, but you have to compare it at $370 at the lowest price that you can find on Newegg and then quote the performance per dollar. However, there's, it's still clear that Intel comes out ahead. It's just like one of these things that Intel does where it's like you stack the deck so much in such a skewed way that like we can't 
trust you wholeheartedly because you just, you make it difficult, all right? You try to give us what, like we know you're giving us a good value GPU, just be forthright with it and don't try these tricky maneuvers like that one time that you disabled half the cores in the 2700X in order to show that your CPU is better. It just, like, be forthright with us. That's the thing that I've been appreciating about the Arc launch was Ryan Shroud and Tom Peterson were coming out and being like, yeah, it sucks at DX11 and you just have to have a new system with resizable bar. That was honest marketing. This isn't. And it's just, ah. But Acer is marketing their new GPU. They're gonna get into the discrete GPU business, it turns out. It's not quite clear if this is gonna be part of like their pre-builds or if this is gonna be something they sell separately. Their tweet makes it seem like they're gonna sell it separately, but it's not 100% clear at the moment. They keep saying, stay tuned. But they're, they've christened the Predator Bifrost, which is a two type of cooling solution. You can see right here that it has a blower fan right here, which is what's presumably cooling like the PCB and everything. And then they had just have a regular fan right here, which is cooling the heat sink that's coming out of everything else. It's kind of a neat setup. I wonder how good it's gonna be, how cool everything's gonna stay, but Acer potentially entering into the discrete GPU market. And I'm gonna exit this episode of Hot News because I'm done. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends.